see you all. Today is Trail Life Sunday, so it's going to be a little bit different. The group of boys uh, that have been getting together and learning about life and God and manhood are going to be sharing this morning, and I'm excited about that. I have a quick verse I wanted to share, to share, not chair. Uh, Philippians 2, 9 to 11. I think this is. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. And heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, of, of God the Father. Amen. So let's sing some Christmas songs and some worship songs and just get into his presence this morning. everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. It's uh, my pleasure to be up here in front of you guys. Um, here in a little bit, we'll be hearing from all the boys from Trail Life. So the service is going to be a little bit different th today than what it usually is, but I'm praying that it'll be a blessing to um, everybody that's here, including the boys. So before we even get started, I want to say a little prayer of blessing for these boys today, just that their nerves will be calm, that they will um, come up here and and just be courageous with sharing a little bit and that all of you hopefully will be able to be blessed a little bit as well. So let's just all close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning and I thank you first and foremost for this gorgeous Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning. And I thank you, Lord, for allowing us all to be able to be here just to lift up your word and be able to celebrate the season that we're in, which is giving thanks for your birth, Lord. Lord, I ask a prayer blessing and your hand to be on each one of the boys here today. I ask for your hand to be on Mark and myself as we share, but above that, that every word that we say and every action that we do will just glorify your name. I lift up each member of our church that's here today and I ask your blessing on them that they will be able to hear something 
and be able to sum up, come up with something that's applicable to them, Lord. Lord, we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, so what we're going to do first and foremost, if you guys don't mind just rising, we're going to have a brief flag ceremony. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, the Trail Man's Oath, and then we'll turn it back over to the worship team, okay? And offering, too. Yeah. Uh, I didn't forget that. Don't worry. We'll not forget that. Always have the floor. You guys want to go have a seat? Didn't get quite enough seats reserved if you're in the front, but that's okay. If I can have my ushers this morning, that's going to do the offering. Everybody. So, I don't know, there's something about Christmas songs that just gets your mojo going, doesn't it? I find myself walking around Walmart wanting to whistle getting those looks from my wife of just quit whistling, Herschel. you got to stop this. But I'm so blessed to be able to come and just be able to worship God and sing some of these Christmas carols. And sing some of these Christmas carols. Um, so an opportunity for everybody here, and even the visitors in the room, is Friday, December the 24th, which is Christmas Eve at 9 p.m., We'll have a Christmas Eve service here at the church. So I would love to see each and every one of you here and welcome each of you here to participate in that, that good event just to be able to worship the season before the weekend. Um, so that's a good opportunity to come and whistle your little heart out. So hope you guys are here. So I, just, just to kind of get started, I, I wanted to express some gratitude. I wanted to express gratitude first and foremost to, to Hope Church here, but also to Mark Renaud to Pastor Joe, um, but to each of the men that are here with their, with their sons, that are here diligently, every single Trail Life meeting. Um, it's, it's all of you that truly makes the, the, the wheels of Trail Life work. So I am so thankful for you. And each of the boys here, I'm so proud of you guys. You guys are, are amazing young men to get to know. And when you look around this room, I mean, this is tomorrow's future. These are, are the men that are gonna be doctors, lawyers, nurses, mechanics, you go on down the list. And so what better way to be able to instill God's word and God's presence than with our youth of tomorrow. Um, and one of the things that I, I learned from Mark and actually is, is the idea that as a, as a man, you're, you're gonna mess up from time to time. You're gonna screw up from time to time, but it's what you do up with that um, issue and with that mess up from time to time and, and how you try to give that back to God. So. What we're going to do today is share a little bit about Trail Life USA, and I'd welcome to Mark to come up at any point that he'd like to, um, but just share a little bit about Trail Life USA, what it is, who we are. Um, so at the very high level, Trail Life USA is a uh, Christian outdoor adventure program, meaning that it's all about getting the boys out in God's great creation to be able to see what God has in store for us outside of the four walls, walls of our houses, our homes, um, but just out in the great world. And I think whenever you get out and out, out and about, you can truly learn a lot about yourself, but just be able to see God's glory and God's beautifulness. So we are unapologetically Christian. That is a characteristic that's not always evident in our world today. But that's one of the key things that Trail Life USA is, is based upon. 
So we have a lot of fun. It's focused on outdoors. It's built upon character and leadership. And so the boys today, they're gonna show you some character. They're gonna show you some leadership as they get up here in a little bit and they share maybe something that they've learned from trail life, maybe a favorite verse, maybe their favorite experience. And I can tell you, we've had some experiences in trail life. Every camp out we've gone on has been beautiful weather. It's been about 70 degrees and sunshine. No, it's been warm, has it not? No? Yeah, that's not what I heard either. That might be a bit of a fib, but we've had a good time regardless, so. So what you heard this morning just a little bit ago was our oath. And this is something that all Trail Life troops across the country um, share. So Trail Life USA was formed in 2004. Some of the core members of Boy Scouts of America, they said, you know, we need to, we need to create a program that is truly faith-based and is a Christian-based program. So they made Trail Life USA. So this oath up on the screen, it says, on my honor, I will do my best to serve God and my country, to respect authority, to be a good steward of creation, and the golden rule to treat others as I want to be created, as I want to be treated. So Trail Life USA, we're about 800 troops strong across the country. We're in all 50 states of the United States. There's about 30,000 trail men, which means there's about 30,000 boys, similar to the 20 or so boys in this room that meet on a regular basis to learn about God, but ultimately to be able to go out and just enjoy the great outdoors a little bit too. So the vision is to be, be the premier national character development organization for young men who produces godly and responsible husbands, fathers, and citizens. And as I mentioned, these boys, they're the future. There's gonna be a coming time whenever Men like my father-in-law, for example, we may not be around. Myself, I'm not gonna be around. And we're gonna pass the baton off to today's generation, which are the boys in this room here today. The mission of Trail Life is to guide generations of courageous young men to first and foremost honor God through leading with integrity, serving others, and again, experiencing the great outdoors. Our motto, is walk worthy. That's an action-packed word right there, which is based upon Colossians 1.10, which says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to God, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's some pretty powerful stuff. When you think about every action in your day, every action in your life, that it truly is glorifying God. Sometimes I think we get into the what's in it for me syndrome, but ultimately it's, it's not about me. It's not about these men in this room. It's about God and, and trying to share his glory in everything that we do. So as I was preparing for today and Mark and I were kind of chatting about what does this gonna look like today, I came across this um, statement and it says, between the innocence of boyhood and the dignity of manhood, we, defined a delight, we find a delightful creature called a boy. A boy is truth with dirt on its face, beauty with a cut in its finger, wisdom with bubble gum in its hair, and the hope of a future with a frog in its pocket. <laughs> that gives me this mental image of the boys. I, I'm sure that if you ask some of these guys when we've been on our camp outs, maybe our float trips, they probably put some questionable things in their pockets. They may have been tempted to put some questionable things in their mouth. I don't know, I hope not. but. Boys are gonna be boys, you know, and boys are, are awesome creatures. God's created them in his image. Um, and that's something that we can take to the bank. So as I described, um, boys will be boys. Throughout the presentation, we have some pictures of some of our outings and some of our experiences. Um, so boys are holistic with their whole being needs to be involved, body, mind, and spirit. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for Mark. He brings a skill set of, of carpentry to the table. And I mean, we, we taught the boys how to, how to build a shed. I can't cut a straight line in a piece of wood, much less build a shed. And then Carl Sears, another one of our brothers, he is amazing with mechanics. 
So we brought an old junk lawnmower um, to the table and he actually got the thing running. So the boys learned how to put a spark plug in it, how to change the blade on a lawnmower. I mean, that's something that I didn't learn from my dad back in the day, it was trial and error. And it's by God's grace, I still have both my arms intact. But those are some of the things that we've taught the boys. We built bird houses over the past few years. Um, I'm sure the boys are probably gonna share a little bit more in a bit. Um, and these are some of the pictures from our early on, just teaching boys how to put up a tent, how to make a campfire, how to work together as a group. And it truly is refreshing um, seeing the guys come together to work on common goals and common tasks. But every single Trail Life meeting starts with the pledge. It starts with the oath. Um, one of the men, whether it be myself, Mark, Johnny, one of, the other, one of the other dads, they come to the table and they share devotion. They share truth about God. They share the Bible with the boys. And then from there, we usually have a project. We go outside and um, play games. We have our fair share of fun, don't get me wrong. But ultimately, it boils back to God and God's word. So what trail life spiel would not be complete with a lot of, without a little bit of dad humor? So what's our idea of social networking? Can anybody to tell me what that is? I see my wife already kind of rolling her eyes, like really, you're going there right now? So what it's not, it's not Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's not all these little social media platforms. It's not electronics. That's not the root of who we are as people and how we should share as people. Granted, they have their place. I'm not saying that they don't, but our vision of social networking is being around a campfire sharing, being intimate with the boys, learning from each other with a hot dog on a stick. I've, some, I've eaten some burnt hot dogs. Sometimes when the boys, we go camping, the boys are typically um, help do some of the cooking. And you know, it's, it takes a man to eat a hot dog, you know? Mark kind of teasing me about it. We had a trail life meeting and I swear that thing was like a lump of charcoal and it was the only hot dog left. I ate that thing. I wasn't quite right ever since that, but it's a good time though, it really is. So again, these are some more of the pictures of the boys and some of our outings. Mark, you wanna come up and share a couple words? I know he had some, some things prepared as well. Yeah, a few years ago, I started to uh, look for something to help raise up these young men in our church and in the area and I, I we'd already been as a family and a lot of you guys have been through the men's classes over at the Center for Life they got a great program over there for men I think uh, you were through there too weren't you Patrick? Yeah but I was looking for something to help encourage the younger boys and younger men as they're stepping into manhood I did some reading and made some phone calls and I heard about a group called Trail Life USA <clears throat> there you go and uh there wasn't any trail life groups close to us. And are you whistling again? <laughs> I talked to somebody in the national office said there's not too many groups close, but he'd follow up with me in the future. But I didn't think I'd hear anything from that conversation. I just kind of laid it down. But a few months later, Pastor Joe mentioned that he also separately been inquiring about trail life. And they mentioned to him that somebody named Mark Renaud and, and Hersha Parker had reached out to them. In, uh, in the area here. So we all three made separate inquiries without the others knowing about it. And I think that's just a God thing. See, that's what he was doing. <clears throat> so Joe called me up and he met with Herschel and I, and that was the beginning of Troop 413. And uh, the rest is history. Well, not exactly history yet. The rest is actually the present. And by God's grace, it'll also be our future. But, uh, we seek to serve these boys and young men to help them to become men in our world. The world needs leader men. Our community needs men, our church needs men. And so I'm, I'm gonna just take this moment, if you guys would just bear with me. If you're a man that helps a father or a leader, could you just stand up? Jonathan is a leader. Mike, you come, stand up. Travis, Jonas, I'm, I'm gonna call you out if you know it's Carl. And if you're not standing up, stand up. I don't know that I see everybody, but, but these, these guys are also leaders in trail life. They, they bring their sons or they bring their selves, and, and we're blessed to have such, such leadership and help here. So 
Thank you. The truth, truth number 413 comes from Philippians 413. We're not, we're not number 413. That's the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I like that the primary focus of trail life is discipleship, which is really mentoring and being mentored to become more like Jesus. Isn't that what discipleship is? And that happens man to man. It doesn't happen really sitting at home. Although some nights I think Herschel and I would say we'd probably rather sit at home <laughs> after long days of work. It doesn't happen just doing nothing. God's plan for that to happen, for boys to become men, happens the same way that iron sharpens iron. That's what the scripture says. The same way men sharpen each other. The same way a piece of iron called a file sharpens a piece of iron called a sword. When men get together, they sharpen each other. Yeah, they do things together. They do fun things together. Yeah, they, they do hard things together. But they do sharpen each other in the process together. We do some fun and challenging things, as, as Herschel already mentioned. Yes, we camp. Yes, we build fires. Yes, we cook out. Yes, we get cold, very cold. <laughs> yes, we do uh, meals together. We t learn to tie knots, lots of knots. We pack over 60 shoe boxes for the Christmas shoe box program. And yes, we do things. And actually, the older group now, Jonathan and I are leading the navigators and the adventurers from 11 to 18. And we're actually studying the U.S. Constitution. So we don't, we don't always just play basketball. But we are learning about the history of our nation, the history of the Declaration, the history of, of the navigators, and what it means to be in this country. So listen to this amazing verse from the Apostle Paul, though. It, it really fits trail life. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, did you hear that? When I became a man, I put childish things away. Well, most of them. <laughs> Sometimes we pull them things back out a little bit. But there's no details in, in that chapter, 1 Corinthians 13 or in, in Corinthians, on how that looks. Paul, how, how did you become a man? <laughs> What's that look like? But I think he did describe it in a letter he wrote to the Ephesus. This is what he says in Ephesians 4. Jesus himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. Listen, he gave these people to the church for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, <clears throat> until we all come to the unity of the faith of the full knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to a mature man, to the full measure of stature and the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, it says in Ephesians 4, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful pl plotting. But we are now able to speak the truth in love. May we grow up in all things unto him who's the head, Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ has given us pastors here at Hope Church. These pastors are equipping the leaders of trail life to do the work of trail life, which is to mentor and disciple the younger men to become fully mature in Christ. God's plan for, for boys to become men is really through the church, according to the New Testament. <clears throat> Don't you want to see men who are mature? Don't you want to see men who are equipped? Don't you want to see men who are unified in the true faith? Don't you want to see men who are solid in their understanding of the gospel? Don't you want to see men who are now tossed to and fro with false teachings? Don't you want to see men that aren't tricked by other men or who are deceived by the craftiness of the world? And don't you want to see men who are unashamedly able to speak the truth in love and to live uncompromising lives in the power of the gospel and to bring light in the darkness of our time? Who wants men like that? <clears throat> Trail life fits into that plan. The primary focus is raising 
boys to become men, to lead the church of Christ in all truth and to equip them in doing their part to fulfill the Great Commission. I'm going to read one final statement from Paul. Paul told Timothy this, <clears throat> and I take it just as if it's our pastor who's telling us trail life, like Paul and Joe saying that to the trail life leaders. And I also take it as just the trail life fathers and leaders saying it to the trail men that are part of us here. So just, just take this as a statement from God, <clears throat> and I'm going to say it to the trail men. Could you all, all the trail men please stand up? I'm going to read these words to you guys, just as if they're coming from the Lord. This is what Paul said to Timothy. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ and the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses. These commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ no one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life so that he may please the one who enlists him as a soldier. Men, I exhort you as I exhort myself, walk worthy. You know, I, I, I really look up to Mark and I truly appreciate everything that he does for trail life, but just, just as a man though too. So thank you, Mark, for that. Yeah, it's good stuff. So Mark kind of touched a little bit on his group. Hold on here. Let me get this PowerPoint to catch up with me. Technology and I don't always jive. So he touched a little bit on, on his group. So pretty much within our troop, we have about 25, 26 boys. Um, a few aren't able to be here today, but we have 19 here today in, in, in the, the room here. So that's phenomenal. Um, so my group that I take, that I lead is called the Woodlands Trail. And that's the group from kindergarten up through hmm, fourth grade. Am I right? Thank you for that, Mark. 10 or 11. And then a fifth grade on up to age, 10, age 18 um, is the older group. So that's how we have it kind of split up. So the core curriculum for my group of boys um, they have the opportunity to work through and earn awards over time. Um, so just very high level. The things we talk about is heritage, hobbies, life skills, outdoor activities, um, pioneering skills, science, and, and just faith-based values. Um, so each and every night, we typically pick one of these and we just talk through it. And um, oftentimes there's a hands-on component where maybe we, we're making something or maybe it's going out and working on a lawnmower, for example. Some of our projects are more long-term. It takes us three months to work on. Sometimes it might take us a full year to work on. But each of these projects are just giving some of the boys some of those skills that they're going to use later on down during their life. So the key thing about Trail Life is it's 150% church-owned. We're not owned by Trail Life USA. Yeah, we have the Trail Life USA name, um, but it's delivered to families through our local our, our local troops. It's owned and operated by a charter organization, which in our case, it's Hope Church, um, and it's troop funded. So anything we do, we do some fundraising for, and um, we just rely on each other for whatever funds that we need throughout the year. So our hope is that every camp out that we have, that boys aren't being charged with having to buy a bunch of food to bring, um, that we as a troop can bring everything that they might need. Now, sometimes we may ask them to pass, pack a, uh, a lunch or something along those lines, or maybe bring something just as a special treat or something. Um, but it's ultimately, it's, it's volunteer driven. In Trail Life USA, there are six core members at the national level that are paid um, employees. And they're the ones that just help deliver the program across the country. And then from that, there's sectional point men. So basically here in the United States, we here in the United States, here in Missouri, in Southeast Missouri, there's a point man that is kind of the, the, the point of contact for Mark, Joe, and I, if we have questions or are concerned about something, um, they're that person who we would reach out to to help us figure out whatever that answer might be. Then at the church level, of course, um, we have our core group here. Um, and it's, it's all adults. Again, as Mark described, the primary objective is to um, help grow boys into becoming godly men. But it's 
done by allowing boys to be mentored by other Christian men. Thus, all those men that you saw standing up here today, they all have a part of trail life. They're helping bring a devotion from time to time. They're helping share their skills and their passions. Um, so again, I am so blessed to have those individuals here and I welcome other men to get involved as well. All contact positions are filled by, by men. Um, and then the dads, they're encouraged to participate as well. Um, I really love to see whenever the dads are helping their boys and just the other boys work through projects together. And just even on the campouts, I encourage dads to come out on those campouts as well. Now here, moms, moms are invited from time to time. I'll highlight Rebecca, for example. She came and helped out with the Operation Christmas Child and, and Misty. Um, there are a couple moms of some of the trail men, but I, I can tell you what, we packed 70 boxes for, for Operation Christmas Child. That would have not have gone off as smoothly as what it did without my wife and Misty and Rebecca. So thank you guys for being there and participating with that too. And safety. Whenever you go on a, a camp out or a float trip, for example, you gotta make sure that you come, if you leave with 19 boys, you gotta come back with 19 boys. You gotta make sure that nobody loses that proverbial arm or limb. And we've been on some pretty sketchy uh, trips and we'll see if the boys share anything about those, but it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's also nerve wracking though as well. We have something called too deep leadership. And that's the idea that there's never a man and a boy intentionally left alone. So if we're on a camp out, for example, and the kids wants to go wander around in the room, there's not two people going, there's a group of boys going together. And that's just number one, to make sure that they're safe while they're out, out doing whatever they might be doing. So coming up in 2022, the vision, of course, we'll have our spring camp out and we're gonna pick the coldest day of the year to go camping again. <laughs> now, hopefully it's a little bit better weather. Um, so we have spring camp out coming up. And then we also set a goal for our, our troop to um, go to the ARC experience. Did I, did I call that right, Mark? Jonas? ARC encounter. To go to the ARC encounter in, I don't know where it's, Ohio, Kentucky. I need to learn a little bit more about this, obviously, before we go. But we, we set a goal to do some fundraising and take all the boys to the ARC encounter for a weekend. So that's going to be something that we're, that we're working towards. And heaven willing, we'll be able to go do that next fall or into the summer next year. So that's kind of where we're, where we're headed here. So with that being said, I would like to see all the trail men, dads, whoever would like to share, come up here and let's make a row to my left, to my right. So come on up boys, don't be shy, don't be bashful. You guys got this. Start over there, Arrow. We're just gonna make just a row across the, across the front here. So probably a it's probably been a month, two months ago. I challenged all the boys with kind of doing a deep dive in their own lives and sharing possibly their favorite verse, maybe their favorite memory of trail life. Um, maybe just how trail life is helping them grow to be a man of God. So I'm gonna start on my left with Sir Josh down there. Go, Josh. Thank you. Hi, my name is Josh. My favorite verse is 2 Timothy 1 7, which is God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love. And my favorite memory of trail life is a camp out where it was really cold and it was raining. We got to play in the rain and it was fun. <laughs> I don't know. Nice job, Josh. I'm Carl Sears, and I bring my boys, Jeffrey and Johnny, and it's just really neat to be a part of an organization that puts God first and to show the boys how to do that. I am Johnny. And I like trail life um, because we because the float trip. <laughs> I love trail. Um, my name is Dar.
Jeffrey Sears, and uh, Let's walk away from the speaker. <laughs> Because I like trail life is uh, uh, you, you get to learn how to be a man. I'm Mark, and uh, I'm one of the older guys here. But my, a couple of my favorite memories are this guy right here, Carl, on, on that mentioned flow trip already. <laughs> and there's a lot of stories about that flow trip, by the way. But this man, this man, like all of us, got flipped over in very rapid water and lost his glasses, lost his wedding ring, which he wasn't even sure he'd get off his finger, but that water pulled it off his finger, and he took it like a man. That, I want to be more like Carl when I grow up. And also, a couple memories uh, that I like about trail life is when Herschel was teaching us uh, knife safety, he actually cut his finger. Yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> and when I was showing the boys how to cook around the campfire, I got like a second degree burn on my hand. So. <laughs> I'll pass the microphone. All right. You want to say why you like trail life? Hi, my name is Seth. I like trail life because it helps me to be a man. Hey, good job. All right. Uh, I'm Travis, and these are two of my boys, Arrow and Scythe, and they are involved in the trail life. And uh, I like tri trail life extraordinarily because of two things. Number one, it's a great opportunity for my kids to grow in the Lord, to be witnessed to by other men and get encouraged in their faith. Uh, we get to do a lot of fun stuff together, but I love it because it helps them to grow in character. Uh, lots of times when you're at home and things are plush and easy, it's just plush and easy. And uh, when you get to be a little uncomfortable sometimes at certain trips and things like that, it helps them just to grow as men and grow in their faith as well. So that's what I really am blessed about trail life. Hello, my name is Arrow Lee Pusey, and I like trail life because it has taught me a lot more how to become a man and my favorite memory verse is Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, which is, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And my favorite memory of trail life was when we got to go to camp and when we got to make, make paracorded crosses and we got to shoot 22 rifles, which I had never done before, before that. Hello, my name is Parker Flieger, and I, um, one of my favorite memories of trail life was when we went on a camping trip, and um, Mark taught each of us boys how to make our own um, toolboxes out of wood, so. Hello, my name is Jonah Flieger, and I love trail life because it helps me learn to be more like God. And one of my favorite memories of trail life is when we went on the float trip and we got to learn um, better how to um, canoe and work together. I'm Luke and I like trail life because it kind of gets us out of our boxes and we can get over some of our fears like talking in front of big crowds. And um, my favorite memory is camping out on the ground next to a fire under the stars. And that was just a really awesome experience. And the next day going swimming at Amadon. And it's encouraged me by giving me something new and productive to think about every time we get together. Hello, my name is Braden Parker, and I'm gonna quickly use the, well, what I, I can't remember what this is called. Um, my favorite memory took place when we had a camp out at the Sears farm, Carl Sears. We had, after we had devotion, my dad asked everyone if they had anything to add to the devotion. And I remember, if I, and if I remember correctly, Mark added by telling his testimony, which led to another father to lead his testimony. 
and finishing off Carl Sear, who is the owner of the farm, finishing off his testimony. The, the, encourage, the encouragement that the testimonies gave was faith building. Their testimonies was like a flashing light saying, I got your back. It reminds me of Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, I'm, a, I'm always wondering about my future and I'm always, and I'm wondering how God is going to turn me into the man when I was always meant to be. It's comforting to, that God is with me and what today and tomorrow has to throw at me. I'm sure it strengthened more than my faith, but all my other treatment. Thank you for the time to talk about trail light has helped me to become the man I God has always meant to be. And I give thanks for God for using trail lights to, to impact me and other trailmen. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jaron Parker. And first I'm thankful for trail life because it gave me an opportunity to make really good friends. Second, Luke 11, 9 through 13. And I tell you, ask will be given to you, seek you'll find, knock over to you. For everyone who seeks, finds, and do, wait. <laughs> ask will be given to you, seek you'll find, knock over to you. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will it save a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will it give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, not have good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father, heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hi, my name is Camden Parker, and my favorite memory about trail life is when we learned how to build a shed and how to build and fix a mom lawnmower. And my verse is Acts 1 8. You receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 8. My favorite mem memory of trail life is when when we had the float trip and when we when I lost my hat in the water, Mark throwed it back to me. Hi, I'm Jonas Ram. Uh, I'm a trail life dad. Uh, I got a couple memories that I'll share. <laughs> One of them is uh, we were at a camping trip and we, uh, I, I got the duty of trying to teach people, teach the kids how to do a paracord cross, which is somewhat a little difficult, but some of the 10 year olds, nine year olds, they were like flying through it. And then we had Herschel here, who's how old, 30, 38. He, we had to really show him how to do it. Like he, he was, he was struggling. And uh, what was, oh, the other one was the float trip, me and uh, Mark were kind of parked on the side of the bank and Herschel decided there was like this two-way fort of trying to go down farther stream and Herschel was gonna try to paddle to get to the farthest one while he ended up getting sucked by the current into and it made his boat get sucked under the water. So me and Mark had to go rescue Herschel from, and Camden from floating down the stream kind of but seriously, uh, it's been a great group. Uh, thank Mark, Herschel and Mark for the vision of having it. And also uh, like I want those Mark and Travis and uh, Herschel are all from Pope and the rest of us fathers, we're kind of from different churches. So we thank you all for welcoming us to Hope and welcome being unified by Christ. My name's Samuel, and I like trail life because we get to make new friends, become a man, and we get to fix and then learn more stuff. And then we make some fun activities, and everyone has a great time. My name is Micaiah, and I like trail life because we got to make toolbox and toolboxes, and I like Isaiah 55, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, 
come by and eat, come by wine and milk without money and without price. Hi, my name is Michael Flieger. Uh, three of the boys here are mine, Parker, Jonah, and Micaiah here. And uh, I really uh, appreciate Trail Life uh, because uh, the world is really trying to push us into its mold. And we see that in so many ways in, in our culture. Uh, but we have a higher calling, and that is that God is uh, transforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. And and that is far better. So I appreciate that uh, Trail Life is is here to, to be different from the world, and, and it's, it's good to be different from the world. My name is Vinny. I like Trail Life because my name is Vinny. I like Trail Life because with my friends. Good job. My name is Griffin, and I'm new to Trail Life, so I haven't got to go on these adventures like them, but it just seems so exciting about how the great times they've had and the great leaders Trail Life has. I'm just thankful for that. My favorite verse is Ephesians, Ephesians 2, verse 8. Oh, I did it. For by grace you are saved through faith and that's it. Hi, my name is Gabriel and um, my favorite memory of trail life was fixing the lawnmower because I wasn't here for any events like him. And my favorite verse is Second Timothy verse um, one through seven and it's, um, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but, a, but with power and love and, um, sound mind. Hi, my name is Joshua, and my favorite verse is Trust in the Lord with all your heart, Proverbs 35. So I am also new to Trail Life, because these are my brothers, and I like Trail Life because I'm to meet new people um, to help me out as I grow older and to come closer to God. Jonathan, and uh, I've been part of Trail Life since it started, like three years ago, and uh, it's always been great for me to come here and see uh, everyone else, all these cool guys that want to be there and learn and grow. It's been great for me, and uh, one of the verses I've been thinking about lately, it was, it's in Philippians, a little before the verse my dad said, it's, uh, do not be anxious about anything but in everything in prayer and supplication, letting your requests be made known to God. And uh, that's what I've been thinking about. And then later on, like my dad says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I, I just want to say I've been very encouraged. All these guys make it look easy up here when it really is very hard. <laughs> my heart's pounding right now. <laughs> so thank you. So this is the Troop 413, um, and again, my name is Herschel. I haven't did my little favorite memory yet, and I want to preface this that it's not a pick on Herschel day up here. So I know like Mark mentioned I cut my finger. Yes, I cut my finger, and I tried to best to hide that for about 15 minutes, but it bled like a stuffed goose because I cut it pretty deep. But whenever you have a little boy coming up and you say, hey, I really want this knot out of this walking stick, you need something bigger than a pocket knife. You need a skill saw for this but it wasn't working quite right and then I wasn't the only one that flipped my canoe either 
So, one of my favorite memories is from our Trail Life camp last spring. So we had our campfire, and Travis brought his guitar with him, um, and we spent, I don't know how long was that, it seemed like, I mean, it was, it was great, but we spent probably half an hour, 40 minutes just singing songs and worshiping God, and then many of the men shared their, their testimony. Um, so it was, it was a really, really, really good time. That was one of my favorite memories. And on that same camp out, Sir Jonas here, who so kindly picked, out, picked, me out, picked on me for flipping my canoe, burnt a tent. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hole in it, though. <laughs> and it was his. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, lo I love these guys, and I'm truly encouraged by each and every one of them up here. So I really appreciate you guys standing up here. Do you want to share? I, I, I'm not done, but do you want to share anything, Joe? Okay. Um, do you guys want to have a seat? I appreciate you guys sharing. You guys did amazing. There we go. Like, did you have a memory you wanted to share, Joe? One of these days, we're going to get Joe out there <laughs> camping with his motor home, apparently. Called glamping, yeah. So, all the guys shared quite a bit. They shared characteristics of their favorite memories, but just how the idea of, of steel sharpening steel and how we're able to encourage each other. Um, so again, I, I'm so proud of these guys. It's, it's truly great seeing Johnny. Where's, where's Johnny? There he is, Johnny. He's actually coming along as one of the adult leaders in Trail Life, so it's very encouraging to see him um, kind of getting out of that comfort zone and sharing a devotion from time to time and just at the various campouts, um, coming alongside some of the guys, and I see him kind of nurturing some of the younger boys and making sure, number one, that they're safe, but number two, that he's truly leading by example. So I'm blessed to see him come along on this journey with us, too, for the past few years. So, so I wanted to share, lunch is coming up about 12, 12, 15 here, by the way, so I'll make sure I'm done by one. So... I'm going to share four key, four key characters. Joe's looking at his watch. I'm going to share four key characteristics. And these four key characteristics are real-life applications that anybody in this room can take home. And they can take to the bank that these are the ways that we should live our lives. Um, and these are the four pillars that Trail Life is built on. They're built on purity, service, stewardship, and integrity. Each of these words, they have some really powerful implications, but above and beyond that, they're all scripture-based, and that's, that's, that's the meat and potatoes of trail life, is being scriptural and biblical. So purity, the trail life definition for this is God calls us to live lives of holiness, being pure in heart, mind, word, and deed. We are to reserve sexual activity for the sanctity of marriage, a lifelong commitment before a God between a man and a woman. And you know, in, in this world that we live, it's sometimes tough to truly guard your mind and guard your body, guard your spirit with all that you have. So the Webster's definition of this is freedom of anything that contaminates or pollutes. So I think of, of, of streams. There's some gorgeous looking streams out there. For the boys in this room, if I took you guys to Amidon, where it's a nice looking little stream to swim in, would you want to swim in that stream if there was a bunch of junk and garbage, if it was muddy, it stunk? So sometimes we have some stinking thinking that we have to get rid of. And ultimately that is what goes to our core as a person, whether you're male or female. You gotta protect your body, mind, and body, mind, and spirit. I mean, God gives you one of those, and you gotta keep it as clean as possible. But what about those distractions? Really quickly, somebody call out a few distractions we have in this world. Social media, what else? Cell phones, what else? TV, video games, give me three more. Work, Brady. Xboxes, video games. That's a huge distraction. Vinny. One more time. VR. 
How about money? How about cars? How about physical objects? A helicopter? A helicopter. That could be a distraction if you got a helicopter. But there's all sorts of distractions out there. And some of these things, that there's, it's, 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 it's just not good for your mind. It's not good for your body. So you got to watch out for those distractions. That's the key application and the key point. you got to be mindful of those distractions. They're going to sneak in before you even know it. The Bible says that the devil seeks to, what, what does he seek to do? Steal, kill, destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. So those distractions, that's going to potentially lead you down a path that you don't want to go down. So in the Bible, what, is, what does the Bible say about purity? There's so many references of purity in the Bible. I just pulled out three. One is Colossians 3, 5, and it says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What does that verse say? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It goes back to those distractions. You got to be pure what, what's inside of here, what's inside of your brain, because ultimately that's going to affect your heart and how you operate on a day-to-day -day basis. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. What does it say we need to do with our sins? Confess. That's a big, 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 big deal. It's acknowledging that we're all sinners. We're going to mess up. And about, probably about 45 minutes ago, we said that, you know, as a man, I mess up on a daily basis. More at Mark. With the boys, he says, you know what, sometimes I mess up. We all mess up, but it's what we do with those mess ups, with those sins. And we earnestly ask God for forgiveness for whatever that thing might be. The second key application point is service. We got purity, we got service. The trail life definition of that is God calls us to become responsible members of our community and the world through selfless acts that contribute to the welfare of others. Does it say for selfless, for acts that serve me and me alone? No. Nah. It says that contribute to the welfare of others. So service is characterized by humility and willingness to work alongside others for others. Not work alongside others for yourself, but for others. It's, it's so great whenever we go on these campouts. For example, whenever Herschel flips his boat, Mark's not sitting on the side saying, ha, ha, ha. Look at you, buddy. You flipped your kayak or your canoe. You're on your own. No, he comes alongside me, and as a man, he's trying to help me. I challenge you guys that if you're driving down the road at a store and you see somebody that needs, needs a hand, take the time and serve that person. You're going to be blessed for it. Lead by example and sacrifice. Sacrifice is a, another pretty key word there, too. Sometimes you got to give until it hurts a little bit. Sometimes it's going to be inconvenient for you. But my encouragement for the boys is if you're at school or wherever you're at and you see a need, meet that need if you're able to. If you don't, who will? And I think that's how God would operate as well in the idea that it's not about him, it's, it's not about us, but it's about him. Do you guys remember that story in the, in the Bible where the lady had a couple copper coins and she gave those copper coins in the collection pan? It wasn't much, but it was all she had. So we as people, we're the same way. We may not have much as far as tangible goods and tangible items, but what we have that we can give and serve others is more than just money and stuff. Is it not? What else can we serve others with? Boys, what else can we serve others with? Food, what else? Time. Micaiah. What's that? Doing the dishes, yes. That is your time helping your mama do the dishes. Unloading dishwasher. That's right. It takes time to put those dishes in the dishwasher, and then you got to get them back out of there. So that's time. Vinny. Clean your room. That's right. Arrow. One more time. Washcloths. You got to wash stuff. Yeah. 
So at the end of the day, it's not just money, but it's your time. And that applies to adults as well. These guys are getting it. They're giving their time, they're being selfless to help their mom and dad. But likewise, we as members of our church, we're the body of the church. We're called to help each other. We're called to serve. We can all be a blessing. Nothing is too small. Whether it's 50 cents or if it's $5,000, if it's 15 minutes that you have, or if it's 15 hours that you have, nothing is gonna be too small in God's eyes. Key application point, it's not always about me. It's an expectation. The Bible tells us to love one another, care for one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, help one another, and support one another. Of these six things, you can do any of the above and it's not gonna cost you a dime. It's gonna cost you a little bit of your time. It's gonna cost you to rearrange a few things and you're gonna bless somebody and God is gonna bless you for blessing somebody else. So what does the Bible say about this? Galatians 6, 2, carry each other's burdens and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. Philippians 2, 4, let each of you look not only at his own interests, but all the, also the interests of others. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Encourage each other. You know, we all have our bad days. We need, sometimes we just need a little pat in the back. We need somebody to come along beside us and say, you know what, it's okay. Or you got this. Or say, I see you're going through that. Let me come alongside with you. Let me walk with you as a brother or sister in Christ. Let me help you out a little bit here. And again, it costs nothing other than a little bit of time. The third characteristic is stewardship. The root word here is steward. God gives us dominion over everything in this world. Dominion means control. God has given that through his grace and his grace alone. So this church building, whenever we go in our campouts, one of the key applications that we have is leave it better than what it was whenever you got there. So one of the things that that we do, and I'm sure all the boys probably like, man, you're making me look for trash again. But walking around that little campsite and picking up little bitty pieces of trash and making sure that it's clean. Whenever we went to Carl's farm, for example, this is, this is actually kind of humorous. So we had to leave, it was raining, right? And so we had to leave all of our tents set up. So I went back the next day, and he has some cows. We had some food. Some of that food was bags of potatoes, like individual bags of potato chips and I don't know what else was there, Carl. There was leftover eggs, leftover bacon. I don't know. Mark had a couple pots and pans left there. So I pull in and here's a cow's nose like stuck in this Doritos bag. <laughs> so furthermore, all the chips were gone. So he had a good old time with all these chips and they were just walking around having a great time. Thankfully, all of our tents were still standing. All of our gear was still there. But I guess we were being good stewards. We were giving those, those cows some additional food for their bellies, I suppose. But regardless though, it's our responsibility to be good stewards of creation. And being a good steward boils down to how you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, with, with all these things from purity to what we're giving to being good stewards, all those distractions, it's what we do with our time whenever nobody's looking. I think that's a big key application. You mentioned those phones, for example. Maybe it's a computer screen, it's a television screen, it's a book. Um, Where's our mind going whenever nobody's looking behind the scenes here? So going back to the stewardship, what does the Bible say about stewardship? Psalm 24, one, the earth, some things in it, everything in the earth, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. We are merely just keepers of what he has blessed us with. Proverbs 3, nine, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest, i.e. tithing. First Peter 4.10, based on the gift each one has received, use it to serve others as God manages, as, God, as good managers of the very grace of God. So again, whatever God's blessed you with, I encourage you guys to internally seek and think about that. And if it's a little bit of time that you can give up, if it's arranging, rearranging your Monday afternoon to help a neighbor out, I encourage you to do that. It's not about us. It's about him at the end of the day. God calls us to use our time, our money, our talents, i.e. Carl, 
working on the lawnmower. I can't work on a lawnmower to save my life. But that man could get a lawnmower from 1920 running somehow. And it's amazing. And Mark, he does amazing construction work. And it truly, it's, it's a blessing, him showing the boys how to come up to the plate and be able to put a roof on a building, how to put nails into a building. Now, the shed that we have started out here, the walls did not fall apart in that thing when we had that big storm. You know why they did not fall apart? These boys put about five nails for every square inch. It's built strong. It's going to stand up for some stuff. But they did a really good job with it, though. So what are the resources? What are we using our resources for? And the fourth and final thing is the idea of integrity. Remember the first Colossians? Walk in a way that's worthy of him and that's worthy of God. So God calls us to live moral lives that demonstrate an inward motivation to do what is biblical regardless of the cost. I'm sure we can all relate. Quick show of hands. How many of you guys have put into a situation where you had to make a decision that may not have been the most favorable for you in the end of the day? It may have costed you something. It may have costed you money. It may have costed you, maybe you got in trouble for it. Uh, we, we, we can all relate to that. I saw half the hands go up, but I guarantee if we've truly thought in your innermost being, there's been situations where it's costed you a little something to do what's right. And that's not always a decision to make. But with God, it is and it can be a more easy decision to make. So the cost of walking worthy, it's the quality of being honest, having strong moral principles. It's how we, again, it's how we live our lives. It's how we walk the walk and we talk the talk. And it's applicable to when nobody's listening, when nobody's looking. So what does the Bible say about integrity? Three verses, Proverbs 27. The godly walk with integrity, blessed are their children who follow him. Psalms 119.1, joyful are people of dig integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. And 2 Samuel 22.26, to the faithful you show yourself faithful, to those with integrity you show integrity. And it doesn't mean having integrity sometimes, I know I've said that probably three other times, but truly, truly, truly with your innermost being, try to walk with integrity on a day-to-day -day basis and acknowledging whenever you mess up, asking, going to God for forgiveness. Maybe it, it might mean going to another person and asking for forgiveness and saying, hey, buddy, I was wrong when I said that, when I did that with whatever that action is. So I think I would leave you with the, the big why for trail life which is to walk in a manner that is worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit. This past Wednesday at Bible study, we were talking about how we're each of a vine and we have many little tentacles coming from us. And some of those tentacles, sometimes they may not look so good. Have you guys ever seen a grape vine or a, maybe a tomato vine that just all shriveled up and it just, it's, just, it's not good for anything. I'm sure we all got stuff like that in our lives. It's just not good for anything anymore. We gotta get rid of those. We gotta take those proverbial snippers. We gotta snip it off. We gotta go to God. We gotta ask God to get rid of whatever that thing is in our life, whatever that, that stuff is that might be weighing us down. So with that, I'd ask us all this before we leave here, before we go to eat, and Joe wants, maybe wants to come up. I know he had something to say as well. Um, but I want us all to pray that we can put those key characteristics in our lives and truly live it out what it means to walk worthy. Again, whether you're five years old, if you're 80 years old, I encourage you just to look in your lives and try to make a change today, a change today for the better, a change that could be life-changing for you. Um, sometimes it's not about every single day in the life and how we're living a life, but it's about how we're finishing our life because we all have that promise that if we go to God, we ask for forgiveness, we ask him into our heart, and we, we live for him, we have the promise of eternal life. We have the promise of being able to go to heaven. I remember whenever I was one of these little guys, we had a program called Royal Rangers. It was in Centerville, Missouri. There was a guy named Bob Dement. And one of the first verses I ever learned was John three sixteen, which was for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall, re, 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. I mean, that's a pretty doggone cool promise that if you believe in him and you're living for him, you have the promise of everlasting life. And it's available to any one of us, whether you're young, old, it doesn't matter. You just got to earnestly open your heart up and ask him and seek him. I mean, he's standing right there kind of knocking on that door of your heart. Like he's, he's ready. But you got to take that step yourself to be able to get him to kind of open that, that door to your heart up and come in there and, and clean your heart and cleanse your heart, cleanse your life, cleanse your, cleanse your brain, cleanse your mind. And it's by God's grace that it can happen. So before we leave here today, I want us all just to say a little prayer. Um, Joe, do you mind coming up and leading us in, you know, just a prayer just to kind of wrap things up a little bit here? And then I got one more thing before we get done, but do that first. Listen, despite all the mishaps you heard about, your kids are safe. <laughs> <laughs> I always asked Herschel, I said, did you come back with the same amount of kids you left with? He said, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when, when we started Trail Life, I, I was wanting to uh, find a ministry because we used to have what was called Hope Kids Ministry on a Wednesday night. We'd have 40 kids in here, and we'd feed them something. I'd, we'd pick them up with a van. But, you know, we've been around long enough to see the results of that really wasn't all that great. And it was a lot of effort and a lot of energy. And then when I discovered Trail Life, it was about discipleship. And, you know, Jesus said, go make disciples. He didn't say entertain people. He said, make disciples. And, and that's what we want to do. We do that in our daycare. We've got how many kids in our daycare, Mary? Okay. And they get prayed for every day. They get the Bible read to them. And we have a Christian school. And that's what it's about is making disciples. How many of you believe that we need this today? We need this today. If we don't disciple our kids and, and teach them the word of God and to, and to live to walk worthy, uh, nobody else will if the church don't. And I'm, I'm glad to say that we're, we've got somebody committed to start the uh, Heritage Girls, which is the flip side of, of uh, Trail Life. So we're going to be working on starting Heritage Girls for, for their young girls. And that's awesome. So I, I, as a pastor, am so, so grateful, I mean, to have this ministry in our church because it's, it's, it's exactly what we need today. It's what God wants today. And I'm so proud of uh, all these leaders, uh, you know, Herschel and Mark and, and uh, Jonathan, you know, it's just awesome to have this in our church. And uh, because I, I'm not a camper, you know, and they keep wanting me to go, and I say, well, I'll, I'll see if I can rent one of those motor homes, and I'll drive up there and turn the air on and, and look out the window every once in a while. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Herschel, it could be snowing out. It would be five, five inches of snow, and he, he thinks, man, it's a great time to go camping. <laughs> and Mark's like, no. We, we, we. <laughs> so we're just blessed. We're blessed to have this in our community and uh, so, you know, I'm just grateful for that. Anything else? You want me to close in prayer? Okay, you got me. Uh, we got a big meal planned back there, so we're going to go ahead and pre-pray the meal. And uh, so when we get done, you can just go back there. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you're doing. We're so grateful for this ministry, Lord God. And I just pray that this ministry would grow, the trail life would grow, and God, that your your ways and your principles would be taught to these young men. Father, we can't look to the government to do this, but we're to, to do this. You commanded us to do this. And so, Lord, help us uh, just to promote this and to stand with it. And Father, I just pray that we would all learn to walk worthy as believers and uh, as your sons and daughters. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I mentioned that I'm, I'm, I'm truly, truly blessed to have these two guys in my lives and in my life. 
but also with all the boys here as we're on this journey. So I would just wanted to recognize them. Just in the season of Christmas, we're going to whistle here in a second. Hey, little, we wish you a Merry Christmas, but I wanted to give you just a little something to tell you thank you for, for everything. So thank you guys so much. Now. <laughs>